In this video, we're going to compare the Rockwell Blade Runner to the Central Machinery 16-inch scroll saw. The Blade Runner I've seen listed for about $130, all the way down to $90, maybe $95, and it certainly is available online. The scroll saw I've seen listed for about the same money, somewhere between $130 down to about $100. I'm sure both saws are available used. I did happen to pick up the scroll saw that you see here used from a gentleman that didn't need it anymore, and I believe I paid $30 or $40 for it. So both saws are relatively inexpensive. The Blade Runner uses a two-pronged plug. It is polarized. While the scroll saw uses a three-pronged plug, this is a grounded plug. Both machines use standard 110 volt AC 60 hertz power. Both of these saws are pretty portable. In fact, the Blade Runner has a built-in handle, and of course not that heavy. The scroll saw, although it doesn't have a built-in handle, you can certainly grab it by the upper arm and pick it up, or of course use two hands. So both of these saws are pretty portable. Now I'm going to turn on both saws one at a time so you can compare how loud they are. We'll start with the scroll saw. We've got the speed control rotated all the way counterclockwise, so this is the slowest speed of the saw. We'll speed it up to full speed. That's how loud it is. Now we'll turn on the Blade Runner, and I think you'll hear the difference. So the Blade Runner is considerably louder. It actually sounds like a vacuum cleaner to me. The Blade Runner runs at one speed. That's it. The scroll saw, on the other hand, is variable speed. So with the variable speed control rotated all the way counterclockwise, this is the slowest speed for the scroll saw. It's about 400 strokes per minute. Speed this up. That's maximum speed, about 1,600 strokes per minute. So we got fixed speed, variable speed. The Blade Runner has four rubber feet, one under each corner, that do provide uh, a significant amount of grip on the tabletop, so it's not likely to slide around. But it also has this fold-down clip, which you can use to slide under the edge, the front edge of your work surface. And with this in place, as you're pushing your, or sliding, pushing your workpiece through the blade, the Blade Runner is not going to go anywhere. The scroll saw, on the other hand, has four rubber grommets located in each of the four mounting holes. That gives it a little bit of grip on the tabletop. And in addition, the, the saw is heavy enough, so you have to push it pretty hard in order to get the saw to slide on your tabletop. The Blade Runner has a tabletop that's always at 90 degrees or perpendicular to the saw blade installed. The scroll saw, on the other hand, has a tilting tabletop. So the table is able to tilt up to about 45 degrees to the left. In the other direction, it goes about that far. So we got fixed tabletop, tilting tabletop. The Blade Runner has two mounting hole locations, one here and one here, should you decide to mount the Blade Runner to your work surface, your tabletop. On the other hand, the scroll saw has four mounting bolt locations, two in the front and two in the back. Both machines accommodate standard quarter 20 bolts. The Blade Runner comes with a fence and also a miter gauge, adjustable, 
whereas the scroll saw doesn't have any facilities for that. The Blade Runner has uh, the ability to connect a dust collection hose or a vacuum cleaner hose right here and the scroll saw also allows you to connect dust collection or vacuum cleaner hose right here. The Blade Runner relies exclusively on a separate vacuum attachment here, a dust collection system or a vacuum cleaner, to help draw away the dust from your cut. The scroll saw, on the other hand, uses a bellows mechanism that's built right into the saw to help produce little puffs of air which blow away the sawdust from the cut. So here we've got vacuum done through an extra vacuum source like a dust collector or a vacuum cleaner and here we have positive pressure little puffs of air from a bellows mechanism that's built right into the saw. The Blade Runner uses standard T-shank jigsaw blades. There's a wide variety of these blades available in the marketplace. You can get blades that will cut wood, both softwood and hardwood. You can even get blades that will cut some metals. And you can also get blades that will allow you to cut ceramic tiles. So there's a lot of different kinds of material you can cut with a blade runner based on the kind of blade you get. The scroll saw, this scroll saw, uses 5 inch pinned blades. There's a variety of blades that you can get that this saw can use. I think most people probably use this saw to cut primarily wood, although if you get the appropriate blade, you can cut other kinds of material as well. The Blade Runner holds on to one end of the blade. The other end is kind of free. The Blade Runner also uses these bearings down here to try and keep the blade in a stable position as you're making your cut. The scroll saw, on the other hand, holds the blade both at the top and at the bottom. And in fact, it's under a significant amount of tension. The Blade Runner has this little compartment right in the front of the machine that you can use to store extra blades. The scroll saw, on the other hand, doesn't have anything like that. The Blade Runner makes it really easy to change blades. All you have to do is push this red button, slide it to the left, and the blade literally pops right out. To put another blade back in, you simply push the red button, move to the left, insert the blade, release the red button, and now it's captured. You're ready to go. With the scroll saw, it's a little bit different because the blade is held in tension. So what you have to do first, if you get the foot out of the way, you move the, take the insert out, and then you loosen the tension on the blade. You'll get to a point where you can press down on this arm, slide each end of the blade out. To put a new blade back in, simply position the bottom end of the blade in, push the arm down, get the top end of the blade in, tighten the tension knob, get some tension back on the blade, and reinsert the insert. Adjust your foot based on your workpiece and you're good to go. With the Blade Runner, there's only one way the blade can go in. The blade always goes in so that the cutting teeth are facing you. So that to make your cut, you're pushing your workpiece from the front of the machine through the blade toward the back of the machine. This scroll saw, though, has four different mounting positions for the blade. You could have the cutting teeth of the blade facing you, facing to the right, facing to the left, and even facing backwards. For the details on all of that and a closer look, check out my other videos about this scroll saw. So the Blade Runner and the scroll saw can be used to make inside cuts. And what I mean by that is if you want to cut out a section in your workpiece, and you don't want to go through the edge of your workpiece in order to get to the section you want to cut out, what you can do is drill a hole in the appropriate spot on your workpiece so that it's large enough to accommodate the blade. 
you slide the blade through the hole with the blade runner, of course, you'd adjust your arm and you're good to make the cut. You could do exactly the same thing with the scroll saw, but it's a little bit more involved because now you have to release the tension on the blade, pull the top edge of the blade out, the top end, feed it through your workpiece, reinsert the top end of the blade, reestablish tension on the blade, and then you're good to make your cut. But there is an important difference between the kinds of inside cuts you can make in both these saws, and that refers to the blades. Let's look at that now. When I got the blade runner, I also got a variety pack of T-shank blades. I just wanted a bunch of different kinds of blades that I could experiment with as I started learning the saw and figured out what I could do with it. This is the narrowest blade in this pack meaning the dimension this way is the narrowest. And it's actually described on this pack as a kind of scroll saw. So it's a kind of blade that people would typically use to make curved cuts. Now, in comparison, the scroll saw is all about making curved cuts. So if I put this blade right next to the variety pack of 5-inch pin blades that I got from Harbor Freight, I think probably even from there you can see the difference. Let me zoom in so you can take a, a closer look. So now you can very clearly see that even though this is the narrowest blade this way in the variety pack of T-shank blades that I got, it's quite a bit wider than the narrowest blade in the variety pack from Harbor Freight. So the lesson here is that scroll saws are all about making curved cuts. In fact, it's a little bit more challenging to make a straight cut with a, a scroll saw as opposed to making the same kind of straight cut on the Blade Runner. In addition, it's probably obvious to you that the narrower the blade, the tighter the turn you could make when making your cuts. So even though this is a scrolling type blade for the Blade Runner, you're not going to be able to make as tight a turn using this blade on the Blade Runner as you would be able to make using this scroll saw blade on this scroll saw. It's so much narrower so you can make a much tighter turn. So once again it boils down to the kind of cut you want to make as to what kind of blade you're going to use. So basically a Blade Runner can be thought of as an inverted jigsaw. That's basically what a blade runner is. While the scroll saw is basically a motorized coping saw. Well I hope this little comparison video between Rockwell's blade runner and Central Machinery's 16 inch variable speed scroll saw was helpful. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.